Hello, welcome to the nugget on passive systems and the use of energy within the built environment. Please be aware of the main things to be considered about energy and building. The first thing to be considered is thermal comfort and how to define thermal comfort. Basically, uh, you have to consider not only humidity and temperature, which obviously should be controlled, but also how the person is uh, connected to the different buildings, the different spaces around him. In other words, uh, the effect of temperature is related also to the temperature of the walls and of the roof. And the radiation coming or uh, being evacuated through this enclosure space is very, very relevant to thermal comfort. For this, you should always address that the temperature should be more or less equal and within the limits which is defined by standards. Once we want to know what's the thermal comfort, we should be able to eliminate uh, the sources of heat in order to maintain control. For that, we have to be aware on how air is moving around uh, and how it's renewed and refreshed. In other words, the parameters to be controlled in any building are the thermodynamics, meaning how to move heat from the building to the air and vice versa. Also the outside condition, which is also addressing uh, how we are suffering from the effect of the environment the typical parts which are connected to activity and personal comfort and obviously uh, the quality of air and the way to control temperature and uh, humidity. All these are the basics which are addressed for getting to our uh, personal thermal comfort through the different systems that are consuming energy. The demand of a building is connected uh, basically to the use we put into the building for air conditioning. The use of energy is a huge percentage related to 42% uh, in this case to buildings, uh, industries 32% and transportation 28%. So the part uh, consumed by buildings is re really relevant. If we can control how energy is moving within the building, we are saving a lot of energy. Uh, the historical evolution of uh, heating and cooling was related to very fastly change the parameters of the air within the building. That's very limiting because of the uh, big amount of energy which is consumed by that and also by the fact that the thermal comfort is not well achieved. The passive house concept would want to introduce is uh, to use as much as possible the materials as a way of storing and delivering energy and also by moving within the house air and renewing it when necessary in order not to uh, add more energy for air which is leaking, going outside or suffering without any need. How have we made that through the same? centuries, basically by controlling windows and by controlling the inside atmosphere, either by high isolation or egg tightness. Obviously, since Roman time, orientation is very important and we can also attack the problem from the point of view of the thermal mass of the building and natural ventilation. All these items are what we can handle and should be uh, using through the materials for the comfort and the passive house design. The U-values is the first element which should be delivered by the materials. It obviously is affecting more than anything about the envelope, although in some cases it can help in separating a specifically critical parts within the building. But basically this is the minimum analysis that is required for energy efficiency and very relevant to a passive house in the highest degree. How to measure this? Basically by using thermal uh, infrared uh, photography and seeing where we have problems. As you can see, it's also 
uh, the position of the materials, the amounts of windows, and the isolation of the walls. That's what we need to change in our selection for the U-tool effect. Later comes the thermal mass. We need in some cases to store energy, either heat to be released by night or the other way around, to absorb as much energy uh, in order not to have an extremely hot atmosphere during summer. Thermal mass is especially relevant where it's addressing the sun and where it's suffering most from the outside condition. After that, we have to control it and position it as adequately as possible, moving air through that thermal mass and energy accumulation as is needed, delivering heat by night during winter or storing heat uh, during the day in the summer. So, moving around the, the air connected to the thermal mass is the topic which we should be addressing. And here we are not changing the U value, we are changing the overall uh, storage of energy by phase changing materials or by storing as much energy as possible, putting water within the walls, things like that have been done before. Uh, the second point is moving air around. Whenever needed, we need to let new air come in, uh, cool air in the summer, hot air uh, during day in winter, in order to move it around and save us the energy of heating or cooling that air. It's not recirculating through the thermal mass, but simply renewing the air when it's adequate for the balance in temperature. And with that, what we have achieved is a very well passive control without any machinery, without any additional energy, only by nature. Thank you very much.